Gaming is massive. Everyone can do it on their phone, PC, console or refrigerator. Not only is gaming getting more and more popular, but companies also do their best to get as much money out of their customers as possible. For that, they have lots of funny little tactics like offering unique skins for a set price or intentionally causing an in-game gambling addiction using human psychological weaknesses. This is all that's wrong with the gaming industry, but also a guide to avoid the scammy tactics studios use to exploit you. At this point, for companies, it's not about making a game and then finding strategies to earn money from it. Rather, they have strategies they want to implement and then try to make a game that fits them. Weirdly, choosing making money over making a high quality product isn't even that good for the gaming experience. It takes away all the fun and ruins the game. But only if there's even a game to begin with. DLCs are the art of selling an unfinished game. Of course, they can work just fine. A studio makes a good game, you buy it, play it, enjoy it. It's a good deal. A few months later, a DLC. More content for a few bucks. It adds new enemies to the game. A new map. Anything that builds on a great basis. I'd pay money for that. Like in The Witcher 3. It has two DLCs and both of them are basically their own separate game. Quite poggers. But let's say the game isn't perfect from the start. No Man's Sky, for example, was hyped to the death before it was released. It was supposed to have endless possibilities and an infinite number of different worlds. Well, too bad if all of these infinite worlds suck. The game came out. And shit was mid. All the planets you could visit still lacked polishing. It wasn't really interesting to go explore all the stars you could see by night. One could say, no man cared about the sky. But Hello Games, who made No Man's Sky, didn't want to be caught lacking again. So they published update after update. Everything to improve their game. There's a whole timeline, and they did it. In the end, only six years after release, they had a good game, and if you had bought it in 2016, you would have to pay exactly zero dollars to get the good version now. This is far from normal. Huh? The average studio wouldn't have fixed their mistake. I mean, why would they? The idiots had already paid for it. But let's say as a company you care about a good reputation or whatever. Certainly, you don't improve a half-finished game for free. Often, it's actually the opposite. Studios intentionally release an uncompleted game only to later publish DLCs for it Bruh. and basically charge you extra for the missing parts they didn't give you in the beginning. EA's Battlefront 2015 did an amazing job at this. The original game cost you $55 and it had basically no content. I got this game when it came out and when I first played it, I could not find any fun single-player game modes. Back then, I thought I was just too stupid. But no. This was a multiplayer game with just a few maps. Obviously, the community wasn't too happy about it. EA then announced four DLCs, expanding on the game. Not for free, of course. In the end, that meant if you wanted to actually play an entire game, you had to pay $110. And this was only the most moral way EA has ripped off players. So stay tuned for later, when we discuss how evil they really are. To be fair, this is not limited to EA though. Many studios actually do this. However, DLCs aren't a complete ripoff. If you think about it, a DLC is still a lot of work. The studio actually has to make content they can sell. No, they don't. Sometimes they just design a few skins, call it a DLC and sell it for 10 bucks. Of course, not every studio does this. There are also some good ways for them to make money. Skins, for example. In multiplayer games, skins don't give you any advantage. Aside from looking extremely fire, they're just cool. And if you don't want to buy them, you have no drawbacks. You're kinda whack though. For example, Overwatch and Fortnite. We like Fortnite! We like Fortnite! They do this, and I have no problem with it at all. You can get cool items if you want to, but you don't have to to compete with others. Nobody loses. Paid customization in general is nothing bad. 
except you put it in a box. Loot boxes contain random items you don't know before you open them. Who's that Pokemon? It's Pikachu! It's Clefairy! And you can usually get them for in-game money or real money. But you don't know what's inside. You never know what you're gonna get. And loot boxes? Loot boxes are evil. Doesn't even matter what's inside of them. Doesn't matter if it's FIFA, where you can get a real advantage if you get something good in your packs. We got Coco! We got Coco! Or the later stages of Battlefront 2, where you just get cool skins that don't really mean anything. Battlefront 2 and FIFA are both games from EA. Yes, it's their time to shine. Or shadow, whatever the opposite is. EA is evil. In fact, so is anyone who uses pack openings, loot boxes or anything like that. If you see them in a game, it only means one thing. The studio wants you to become a gambling addict. And this is proof. I found this video of a guy that explains how to earn as much money as possible from your video game. And literally the first words he says are... Some of you will probably uh, be slightly shocked by w all the tricks I have listed here, but I'll leave the morality of it out of the talk. We can discuss it uh, if we have time later. If someone tells you that we can discuss more later, if we have time and anyone cares, you know. Whatever he's about to tell you will be the most immoral things that have ever been uttered by a human being. There is a psychological effect behind opening boxes and getting a random reward. Don't ask me why, but our brain just loves it. When you decide that you're gonna pay for a certain in-game item, you know what you're gonna get. I mean, it's alright, like... But when it's random? When you don't know if or when you're gonna get something worth your money, you do it much more often. Because when it works, you're happy as f- OH MY GOD! Yes! <laughs> this is Lakari. He just spent $1,700 on Genshin Impact to get a character. Is this the normal reaction of someone who just lost $2,000 on a video game? Loot boxes are slot machines. In concept, and the way they are presented. Just look at the animation you get when you open them. So epic, so satisfying. Opening them just feels like a reward. But let's be honest. Of course, they aren't really like gambling. Because in gambling, you can actually win money. Here, you lose money either way. In the best case, you get a video game character. Now, you might be thinking, huh? I don't care, I've never paid for anything in a game. Well, it can go faster than you believe. Nobody actually goes and thinks, whoa, stumble guys? What a creative concept. No one has ever done anything like this before. I'm gonna spend my life savings on it. Nobody initially wants to pay thousands of dollars for items in a video game. But it does happen, because video game studios make it happen. Here is another website that's basically just a tutorial for game designers to get players to become buyers. After you've played for a while, settled in, got used to the mechanics, you might get an offer to buy crystals, diamonds, golden shards, whatever the currency in the game is. And it's always ridiculous. This is so expensive. Who in their right mind would spend $10 on 800 crystals? For that, I can only get one new weapon that would make me 10% stronger. I'm never gonna spend money on this. And you keep playing. Keep having fun. And then suddenly, you get THE offer of your lifetime. Three legendary packs to open, a 109% experience booster and 10 new skins for not 80 bucks, but 5. Lord have mercy. I mean, it's just 5 dollars. Not 80 like before. This really is a good deal. And why should I even grind in the game if I could have all of this so easily? One time really can't hurt. The hook is where you put up an icebreaker. You want to give a really, really good deal. The first spend, it breaks the ice, then they think of themselves as spenders in the game. Yeah, they got you. This insane deal was a trap. Now that you've spent money once, you'll probably do it again. Another part of the trick 
time limits. This offer won't be here tomorrow. That's how special the offer is. Decide now. And also, did you notice before? Of course not, because it's so normal. V-Bucks, Overwatch coins, crystals, bananas, whatever. Every game has its own currency. This isn't untypical for fictional stuff. Star Wars, for example, has credits and France has the Euro. Yeah, sure. But games don't only have their own made-up form of money to show you that you're now in another reality, but they also help in manipulating you. If you pay $5 for 690 crystals and then 420 crystals for an item, how much money have you paid for the item? <laughs> no. You have no idea? That's the idea behind it. The exchange rate is always a goofy R number that makes it hard to understand what you actually paid. Every game where you can spend money has this. So every game has this. It just makes it hard for you to have an overview of what you actually spent. Now, I know all this sounds bad, but let me tell you something. As evil as all these tactics are, they don't destroy the game. Buying anything I talked about here is a choice. And if you don't, you can still play the game. The game can still be good. But what if the studio goes further? What is when the studio actually ruins a great game just for profit? Good question. As it so happens, I just recently made a video about how this happened with Tanky Online, which you might find interesting as well.